Hello again. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Long time no see. Uh, we've been busy doing a bunch of stuff on the back end here, so I'm thinking that we're going to try to do as many videos as we can right now. But um, anyways, thanks for joining us. We've gotten a ton of comments and a ton of people checking in, wanting to learn some stuff, but uh, overwhelmingly, this has been the most common thing that we've been asked over the past couple months, and it's help with placing stencils how to read the body so let's get into it all right okay so what we're gonna have to do kind of like we did with the positioning videos um like space by space because there is unique stresses that are applied to each part of the body that we have to understand and uh, when we're thinking about stencil placement what we're trying to do is kind of create that jump between understanding the individual that we're working with when we're creating a custom tattoo and then trying to make sure that the design that we've made actually fits it so part one of this is going to be i mean i guess maybe just some theory about how to do the designs effectively or even map the body to begin with so that we can utilize that information of that individual to influence how things are going to be you know best suited for them so <clears throat> pardon me it's been 20 hour days here surprisingly enough yesterday was a 24 hour day i didn't really even sleep but we're gonna we're gonna power through this because i feel bad because i haven't done a video in a while so anyways um our first topic that we're gonna do is just let's just do mapping right and we have some videos i believe already on this it's been a while hasn't it um but let's do it with like very specific aspects of the body so we can start learning how to like you know not only read the person's body maybe understand their skin but then utilize that in creating the design and it's almost like working backwards because i think most of the people are thinking like how do i place this so it looks good and well if the design isn't made correctly it's never going to place correctly right so th this should hopefully i mean you can let me know in the comments um this should just kind of figure itself out for you but if it doesn't just let me know i you know like i said i'm running on a little bit of sleep here and uh <laughs> we can just get this figured out through another video anyways <clears throat> so let's start with um let's do forearm because i i like we had 50 something emails that came in about this one which i thought was kind of interesting um through the website uh even on the podcast now so that, that's been kind of cool um so when we're looking at individuals in the forearms, there's something very specific about this part of the body that's unique, even though structurally it's kind of like the calf, right? If you're looking at, you know, bicep, tricep, shoulders, kind of like hip, quad, you know, hamstring. And then these, these are relatively equivalent in their uh, application and, and engagement with our environment, right? This is one really jacked up forearm, but it'll, it'll just make a case. And I did this intentionally, so. Um, there's three types of stresses that we'll see when we're creating a design specific for the body that's going to influence it. And this is just normal, kin you know, kinetics on the body, right? We have rotational stress, which will have rotational stress that's twisting, right? We have compressive stress. We get something that's crushed, right? And then we have pulling stress, right? Stretching, the thing elongate. <clears throat> so these three types of stress that we know we're going to have in the tattoos are going to be unique to different parts of the body like the stretching that you see around the chest area by the shoulder right on the pectoralis there is going to be a lot greater <clears throat> than the space that you're going to see on your forearm right but the rotational stress that you're going to see in a forearm is going to be way greater than you're going to see up on your chest as well so we have to think about these things before we even start doing the tattoo right if we get into a a tattoo on a forearm and we might as well just <clears throat> butterfly this out it's like we're taking a cross section of the arm and just laid it flat like you're you know gonna grill a chicken it's kind of gross sorry um there's two distinct parts of the forearm that we need to pay attention to and usually what you can see is a median line medial line through the center of the arm where the flexors and, ex and extensors by the elbow right and we'll do this and the wrist overlap you get a bit of a bulging of muscle there right um, and you can usually, if you're like reading somebody's skin when you're trying to like place a stencil or if you're doing a mapping or something, you just have them twist and kind of like exist, right? Move, see their range of motion. People who have a lot of ability to rotate, 
their wrists. Like they have a very long range of motion, just hyper flexible or something like that. The rotational stresses are going to be greater than somebody who maybe doesn't, right? Maybe they've broken their, you know, ulna or something and they just can't twist it as much as the other person. So, but anyways, those rotational stresses are going to be expressed at the lower part, right? And this is going to be our rotational stress area. Where those flexors and extensors start to overlap, you're actually going to see a massive decrease um, in the amount of torsional stress that's going to be applied to the body. And this is always increasing, right? So as you get closer to the thumb, the thumb is going to see the most amount of it, right? So if you're placing a design somewhere in the middle of the arm, for, for example, right? I should do this with orange. So we're placing something in the middle of the arm. That's just dead, dead nut center, right? We're gonna see a lot of twisting the further down and closer to the thumb that this is gonna get uh, in comparison with upper, right? So this is always gonna be turning a little bit more just because that's, that's how we're constructed, right? So if we have a really straight, rigid, square design that we're trying to put into something, um, the top of it that is above that medial line that crosses through, the flexors, extensors overlap, this is gonna be relatively static, right? It won't, it won't move as much. It just doesn't. It stays looking relatively centered on the person when their arm is at their side, when it's out, when it's up, all that stuff just stays relatively the same. But that, the point that starts to extend past that median line and move down towards the thumb is going to twist more and more as it goes. So what you're gonna see is that elongation, right? And warping of the design as it goes. And it's gonna become more prominent, right? as the design, well, it's not that fucking prominent, Ryan, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> it's gonna become more prominent the closer down to the wrist that you get, right? To a point, there's a spot on the wrist where if you bend it, you can start to see the lines, right? So the skin condition actually changes a little bit and you're gonna have a little bit less connective tissue and it's more hypermobile to afford that uh, mobility that we want when we interact with our environment. Um, and that's basically where that cutoff line kind of exists, right? Um, when you get onto the wrist joint, things stay relatively centered and you can see it when you move around, right? They don't really like traverse around the body like something that's on the side of the wrist, you know, twisting so much. It still looks relatively centered, regardless of where it's at, right? But just above that wrist area, you'll see it moves quite a bit. Um, so we need to take this into account. Uh, normally when we're doing designs that are fed to like, we'll just do eighth sleeve, right? Like inside lower eighth. If we have a design that we know is going to be very sharp, it's not gonna have a lot of like smooth rolling lines, things like this. We try to keep rigid designs, right? Above that medial line that crosses through the center part of the forearm, and we want organic aspects below. Why is that? Well, organic aspects can move, right? If you have a rose, it's a traditional rose that you're doing or whatever, right? And it's set at the top, you want it to stay centered on the arm so it's a focal point. Well, if we have stems or leaves or whatever that are coming down there, it won't matter if they move around, right? One, it's not the focal point, but two, it's an organic aspect of the design that can like naturally move. It already is gonna have a bit of movement. It's not gonna be totally fixed. So, especially in smaller pieces, you have to think about when you're designing it, like whatever style it is, whatever placement is, whatever, you know, the focal point is, we're trying to create space that we know is going to be centered, legible, and approachable from multiple different positions, which you can see our video on that one. Um, and it's always gonna look like it belongs where it is, right? If we take something that's really rigid, let's say we flip-flop this stuff, right? and we put the organic stuff up above it, as soon as we start bending and moving that space, right? And you see things bending and twisting, but there's a fixed aspect of that, that, you know, <laughs> organic shape that's up at the top that doesn't move. It's gonna look really weird. And so most people, I, you know, like we used to start the sleeves from the top down, well, that's another video anyways, right? Because it's aging, right? And this spot sees more sun than this. So if you're doing a sleeve and it takes three years, this stuff will slowly catch up with aging to what's already been there over a period of three to five years. And you know, eventually at five years out, the whole thing looks magnificent. But anyways, <laughs> that's, that's totally a different. One. Anyways, when you get into the actual placing of these designs and you take an organic shape that people want to look at, you're also gonna to have to try to take that into account, right? Because if you just place it like you would, normally you just take the design and flip it, it's gonna look really, really weird. And people, especially like when they get these tattoos, they may be able to look at it and think about it and say like, golly, that looks great right there. As soon as they put their arm down, it's gonna distort, it's gonna move, it's not gonna look right. <clears throat> so 
when we're creating the designs, think about that, right? Like however they want the design placed, upside down or right side up, you know, or whatever, center part of the forearm, we should just do that because this is very specific. There's four sides to it. So we'll go center because why not make this really complex? Because it is. <laughs> Regardless of how they want to have it spaced, placed, designed, whatever, you just take into account that you're going to have those two different aspects of the design um, being influenced by the body very specifically. And the person's ability to create movement, their mobility is going to further emphasize those those small distortions that we may see uh, when the design is actually placed. So that's our rotational stresses, right? <clears throat> Sorry. At the spot where I kind of dipped into this for a second, as you get closer to the elbow and the wrist, let's just get rid of this here too, because I don't need this right now. As you get closer to the elbow and the wrist, ooh, put it in our, right? We're gonna get compressive stresses. Um, and you can just see it. When you get it by the elbow, you bend, it closes, right? Same with down by the wrist. At the same time, because they open back up, depending on how that body is at rest when you place a stencil, you're also going to get that lengthening, the stretch, right? So you need to think about how your design is in relation to those elbow and wrist areas when you're actually doing the application, because once again, if you have a very strong fixed aspect of the design that is a focal point that is going to be tearing up closer towards the elbow or the wrist, you're going to get those stresses where they bend and move, right? It's going to pull it, it's going to push it together. And if you want something that is once again, very rigid, very squared, if this is going to be getting pushed down and possibly pulled and twisted, if it bypasses, especially that medial line that we were talking about just a second ago, right? The design is going to look weak. Simple. So that's, that's the forearm front. Um, and this kind of goes for it actually all the way around. Cause I mean, like if you think about the outside, the back, you know, the front, things like this, they're all going to experience these same things along those pathways that we've described, right? And the only thing we really need to think about past these compressive ones, which I know most people are like, I'm just going to go drop a square in a ditch. No, we don't do that. I know, but still it's always good to just, you know, get it out there. <clears throat> the last thing we need to think about, actually, let's just get rid of this, is topography, right? So topography. What is topography? Just feel it, right? It's changes in elevation. <laughs> Our arms are not 2D, right? Planes like we do, uh, utilizing when we do on tablets, paper, things like this, where we're creating the illusion of depth. The body has depth, right? It's not just gonna move up and down and over and be really rigid, right? The body has, if we're looking at like the side of the forearm, it'll have muscles and stuff, right? There's gonna be things that are gonna flex and move up. Somebody compresses, right? They're gonna go down when they twist and rotate. These things are gonna influence the design. So when we're looking at the mapping, we're trying to find the high points of the topography. <clears throat> so if we get the high points, uh, high points are where we want to put the aspects of the design that are the closest to the viewer's eyes. Simple, right? Because it's already there. It's not just flat. If there's a little bit of a bump on the outside of the arm, this is closer to a viewer's eyes when your arm is at rest than your wrist, right? So if you put the design aspect that needs to be picked up quicker, right? Maybe you're going to use some yellow that's more eye-catching, more grabbing with the eye. Um, or you're going to put something that has <clears throat> a really high level of contrast, maybe stronger line work, a drop line, thinking like this around the... It will... I just mumbled so hard, sorry. <laughs> It'll attract that viewer's attention and then you're gonna worry about directionality after that, right? So high points, our midpoints are usually where we're gonna be putting our midground, right? It's really easy. Points, on, geez, Ryan. I am so tired today, dudes, I'm sorry. Midpoints. This is where our midground goes, right? So if you're thinking about foreground, transitional elements, things like this, right? Midground is where all the meat of the design is. That's where like, we're looking to form specifically. All the spots are the lowest on that individual. Those are the things that we can utilize for them, right? We just put them there. And the low points are background, right? Low points are the things we want to put furthest away because they're already furthest away from the eye. It's like, if you think about a back, where you have all the muscles coming around on both sides, right? But the spine is inlaid on people. You wouldn't put a focal point that has to be the most jumping out for someone to see in a tattoo at the space that's furthest back. It just looks really bad, 
you don't do it. That's why you don't do, you don't do symmetrical faces on a back with the nose and the lowest part of the like lower back, right? You don't do that. You change it, shift the perspective a little bit. It makes the stronger design. <laughs> I mean, people do it, they're gonna be like, oh, Ryan, you're an asshole. I did it, it looked great. Yeah, all right, cool. Thanks. Anyways, I think that should be it for today. Um, I'm gonna end up probably trying to do one more after this. Let's just keep these notes up here. We'll see what's up after this. Let us know what you think. Uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And check out uh, our, our podcast on uh, any of your podcast platforms. We've gone wide, we're syndicated now. It's Two Dudes Talk Tattoos. Uh, give us a like, you know, whatever the review thing is. I don't know. i will pass that. I guess we're good for this one for today. Anyways, it's Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off. Hey, hey, hey.